Okay, everyone, uh, in this video, we're going to learn how to find the longest word in a string using JavaScript. Uh, just real quick, I'm on REPL IT. You can find me at Gillen08. And this is uh, just a quick video, hopefully simplifying this as much as possible. You're going to see this problem a lot in your JavaScript courses, and having it broken down for you piece by piece is the best way to learn. I hope to accomplish that here today. All right, great. So we're going to start with a given string. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. If I run this, I get the string returned for me. So we have, what we want to do is create a function in JavaScript that goes through each word in this string and returns a numerical value for us with the uh, uh, with the number of the highest with the, with the longest word. Excuse me. That's going to be jumped. Okay, jumped has six characters. Jumped in this sentence is the longest uh, word in the string. How do we return the number six that is derived from this word here? Let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is create a function. Okay, let's call this function uh, find longest word on JavaScript. Okay, let's give it a code block. And outside of the code block, let's call the function find longest word. Within the code parameters, we are going to have the string. That means the function has to call the string. When we call this function, we're going to return a string, and inside the code block, we have to return something. Let's return the string at first and see what happens. Boom. The function is working. The, fit, the quick on fox jumped over the lazy dog. We have to return something called max length. We want max length. It's not defined, obviously. We want max length to return the word with the most characters. Well, we want to return a number of the, uh, uh, of the characters in the longest word. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we're going to want to create a couple of variables that we're going to store information in. What's the first variable we want to create? Well, before we do anything, let's try to create a variable. Let's, well, let's try to um, separate all the, all the words in this string word by word, and let's return them in an array. We'll do that by creating a variable called word. In this variable, we want to take the string, and we want to split it off okay, into uh, each word. Oops, so let's return. Um, the variable words. Let's see what happens. We return the string inside an array. Cool. We're getting somewhere. All right. But the thing is, we want this array to have each word individually separated from each other. We can do that by using the, uh, the split method. And we can split the items in this array uh, by a given character. We can divide it up by the letter Q if we want. Okay. What happens when we do that? We have two items in the array now that are separated by the letter Q. Q is gone. We have one item called the space, and we have another item separated by a comma with a string wick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The point I'm getting at here is that you can separate all the items in this array by the by the spaces, right? Look at that. Now I have an array that every word as an item, every word in that string separated as an item because I separated the string with uh, the space character. Hope that makes sense, okay? All the information now is stored in this variable called words, all right? So we're getting, we're, we're moving along here. I wanted to try to break this down into how you should be thinking about how to separate words in a string, okay? The next thing you wanna do is create a variable called max length, because this is what we'll be returning, okay? It's the max length variable. Ultimately, we wanna find the word with the maximum length, We'll create a variable called max length. We'll start at zero. So this is going to act as our counter. Okay. The um is going to return zero because we haven't stored anything into this variable yet. So in order to do that, we're going to use the information we've created up here, and then we're going to create a for loop. Okay. For loops have three parts to it. First of all, we want to set the index. Create a variable. The index will start it at zero. Most of the time, variables have an i index, so we'll call it var i. We want to uh, initialize the index. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. The second part is we're gonna we're gonna we've already initialized the index. We're gonna check the condition. Okay, so we'll take i it's gonna be um, less than words dot length. Okay, now what is words dot length? It's a good question, right? We have the words variable separated into each item in the array. Okay. Now, if we have a value for words.length, what is that? That length means that we have nine. 
What is nine? Nine is the number of items in the string, right? Well, the number of words, as we've come to call it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the computer obviously counts at zero. We have zero counting indexes for the computer. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means when our index reaches words.length, which is um uh, which is gonna be eight. Well it's gonna be you know either eight or nine, it's gonna exit the loop. Okay, because if we return words at length nine, that means that when this reaches nine, boom, the for loop is going to exit and it's going to be done. There will be no infinite loop. And lastly, we want to inc increment the index with, um, with a counter. It means the plus plus is that it's going to go up. So have we done anything yet? Not really. We haven't done much with this for loop. We, uh, if we're going to return max length, that means we're still going to return zero. So we have to give this for loop something to do. We'll do that with an if statement within the for loop. Nested in the for loop is going to be an if statement. And we'll take uh, words. And then we'll append the index and we'll call it length. Now, what is what is this? What is words i dot length? Would we do anything with this? Not really. Well, first of all, is it, this is, isn't going to oops, is it going to return anything because it's outside the code block. We have a syntax error. Uh, we can't return anything outside of a code block here. So let's just take this off for now. And oh, oh, let's get rid of my. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these curly brackets here. And I want to take out this so it's not going to mess with anything. Words.length is free. And why is words. Well, sorry, word, the index of word i, uh, the length of it is three. That's because we're starting at zero. Okay. That means that three is the number of characters in the word the, if you understand me. Okay. What if I change this to one? Five is the number of characters in the word quick. Okay. If I change this to two, is the number of characters in the word brown. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have words i dot length is returning values for us, which is the number of characters in each word one at a time. And as you I'm sure you know by now, this for loop is is, is counting up from zero all the way. It's, it's exiting out at words dot length. Once it reaches nine, boom, it's out of there. So this for loop is collecting this information as it goes along. We just have to store it somewhere. And we're storing it somewhere with our handy little if statement. Okay, well, I mean, that's how we're going to start doing it at least, because we'll start with words.i.length. Okay, if words. I keep saying that. If words, if the index of the word.length is, uh, let's say, if it's greater than max length, that's going to be obviously zero. If it's greater than zero, then we want to return something. What are we going to return? Well, we're going to say that words. Actually, no, we'll, we'll start with max length. That, that, here, here's the thing. We want to transform. We want, we want to, uh, I'm not sure what the word is for it, but you, you're, you're basically changing the value of max length. Obviously, up here in the global variable, we have max length starting at zero. And as we go through our for loop with this if statement, checking the condition, then max length is going to change. It's going to change to words i dot length which is um, what you know what I was storing in here like I was explaining to you just before. So let's think about this for a second. What are we doing here? Words i dot length as the as the index goes around this for loop as it gets higher and higher, right? As it goes from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and it exits out at 9. It's checking if words dot length is greater than max length. If it's greater than zero, obviously it's going to be greater than zero every single time. But the thing is, it's going to get higher and higher as it goes through every item in the string. So if words that length, uh, words i dot length is greater than max length, okay, then max length becomes the value of words i dot length. That means here it's going to become three. It's going to loop back around again. Here it'll become five. Loop back around again. Five. Loop back around again. Three. Loop back around again. Six. Loop back around again. Here's the thing. I'll stop you right here. It's never going to get higher than six, right? So once it hits six, max length is going to equal six. And if we return max length from the very beginning, that means, boom, we are returned the number six. And that is, of course, the longest word we have in this string. Let's try something. The quick brown fox had a pulted over the lazy dog. That's the longest word in the string. 
Pokemon Fox catapulted over the lazy Snuffleupagus. I can't spell it. That's the longest word in the string. You see how it works now? That's it. That's all there is to it. I want to show you one more thing before we quit this uh, uh, tutorial. And it's the debugger tool. If I open debugger, okay, and if I copy this code and I run this in our console, bam, this, oop, what happened here? Oh, I called it debugger. <laughs> it's the debugger, boom, brings it into our debugger. Take a look at this real quick. This is really important to do if you want to become a coder, a uh, programmer, is to run the debugger to help you understand how this code is actually working. So we're given the, our function, find longest word, string. The string equals the quick brown fox catapulted over the lazy snuff. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know how to say that. All right. Uh, we go to this button right here. Step over, next function call. Bam. It's checking everything in this function, and it's storing it. There's nine words. It's all separated. Just like I broke it down for you bit by bit. Max length equals zero. Now it's going to loop through this for loop. I equals zero. There's nine words. Bam, bam, max length equals three. Oop, see it right here? Three, max length equals five. Max length, keep watching this, keep watching this counter as I step over the next function call. Max length equals five, equals five, equals 10. Okay, well, it's not gonna get higher than 10 until the very last, see we're at, we're at index eight. Almost to the last item and, ooh, max length equals 13. Now we're at nine. I is supposed to be less than nine, right? So bam, we can exit this function, return max length, and, uh, 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 and that's it. Exits me out of the debugger. Our, oh, get out of here. I think I have to, there we go. <clears throat> Our value is 13. I'll leave it at that, okay? This video is long enough anyway. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> if you have any questions, just email me. I'm not gonna ask you to like or subscribe, that's stupid. All right, thanks a lot. Enjoy yourself in your coding journey. Bye.